Hey everybody and welcome to this rivalry recap. It's a special of the stare down. So if you're ready, sit back, relax, grab a hot toddy or two, just like I did. And let's get into all the rivalry madness. All right. So thanks for joining us. I know this isn't quite a normal episode. Um, I also know that I do probably sound worse than I have at any point this season. I don't think it's from screaming. Who knows though, because what a crazy wild weekend of college football we had. It was everything I could have dreamed of. And then some like, how insane was rivalry weekend y'all? Like I, I'm pretty sure that I'm still waiting to like wake up and it all be just a dream. I just, I can't even believe it. So let's go ahead and dive right on in. The first one that I want to hit is obviously my favorite. It is the Egg Bowl. It was played Thursday night. So while everybody was in their tryptophan uh, comas after all of the turkey and dressing, unless you were at my house and you were in your shepherd's pie and soda bread coma, you got to watch an insanely from the outside probably looked boring egg bowl, but it was actually quite nerve wracking if you had any idea um, what was happening and if you were cheering for either team. So, you know, Ole Miss does not have a great first half, obviously state's defense, man, they were ready to play and shout out to their entire team. I'm going to absolutely give them their props, you know, two weeks before this game, actually not even a full two weeks before this game, they fired their head coach and then their interim head coach. He pulled a stunt. It was very strange. You know, drove a four-wheeler into the locker room um, for his first game and then led them out onto the field on a four-wheeler. As most people joked, that's quite possibly the most Mississippi State thing we've seen. But hey, whatever he did and whatever he said, it obviously had them fired up and ready to play. And that's what a rivalry game should be, right? Like it doesn't matter what your record is going into it. You're there to win that trophy, win those bragging rights. You understand that it means more. I mean, I'm not trying to take away from the SEC here, but truly rivalries just mean more. And especially this last week of them. I mean, you can play a rival earlier on in the season, but if you've waited all season to play them and it's your last regular season game, man, there's always going to be some bad blood there. So Shout out to to State, like I said, you know, for coming ready to play and ready to shut down our offense. I think you obviously saw from the Ole Miss side of things that the offensive line, man, we've missed Micah Pettis. I miss Micah Pettis. I'm sure he doesn't miss being able to be peanut punched like what happened in the Texas A&M game, but we absolutely missed him. I think we saw it really with the Georgia game and it, it it's not anything bad about our offensive line. They just weren't able to gel as well after that. Jackson, you know, took took a few hits. Quenchon couldn't quite get it run, like get it running and get it going. But you know, ultimately we came back in the second half, played really well, made some good adjustments. I felt like our defense, you know, you can't you cannot discredit our defense. They held strong all game. I think as you saw this season go along. You saw Pete Golding's system really take hold. And yeah, they had a few hiccups. I mean, really, honestly, the Georgia game to me is the only real hiccup that I think you saw them have all season. But you can tell those kids have bought into it. So I was really happy with what I saw. Now, as a fan, would I have loved for it to have been like, you know, 70 to nothing? Absolutely. But it wasn't bad. It wasn't a bad way to start off the week. And so I I was... I was thankful that the egg obviously came back to Oxford. I was very thankful to be done and then to be able to sit back and watch everybody else's games. So shout out to my rebels. Hottie toddy y'all. The egg is back where she belongs. I'm so happy. I'm so happy for her. Juice has already had his picture made with her and uh, she looks good. She looks really good back, back in Oxford. So, you know, that was, that was the first real game. And then, one of the things we saw on Friday, and I'll be completely honest, to me, the Friday college games just weren't very interesting this year. I think the NFL doing their Black Friday game, I honestly think it took apart um, some of the hold that college football has held on this weekend for so long. So I'm not sure how I feel about that yet. 
I'll probably talk about it in the regular episode on Friday of this week, but yeah, I just, I wasn't really excited about anything on Friday. Obviously, I really needed Arkansas to play Missouri better than they did just for ranking purposes for the Rebels, but they didn't, and I'm I'm hoping that the committee sees that, you know, honestly, an Arkansas and Missouri matchup, man, if we had played the same Arkansas team that Missouri got, I'm pretty sure we would have beaten them just as badly, but we didn't, and that's okay. So I really hope the committee sees that, that, you know, both teams, both Missouri and Ole Miss, man, we've battled throughout the season, and we both have two losses, and this is where it's going to get hard for them because we do have two losses, you know, now granted Ole Miss's losses are on the road at Alabama and on the road at Georgia, who are obviously ranked higher than Ole Miss and Missouri. Missouri's two losses are at home to LSU, which Ole Miss Miss beat, and then also to Georgia. So, you know, you can make the argument that, yeah, if, if Missouri had played Bama, could they win? I don't know. We both played LSU. We beat LSU. They didn't. They're still ranked higher than us. I really, I said this to a couple of friends, and I I would love to see an Ole Miss-Missouri matchup. Put us both in a New Year's Six Bowl against each other. Let us duke it out. Let us see who can really, like, go at it neutral field. Like, let's go. Like, third place in the SEC. I want to see it. I really, honest to God, do. I especially want to see it in a bowl game so that Ole Miss can get a little healthy Uh, One of the things I didn't mention is that obviously Ulysses Bentley went down with some kind of um, injury during the Egg Bowl and it kind of looked like broken ribs maybe. I'm not sure. No one's really said anything yet as to what that was. And then also Jackson Dart's been kind of banged up since the Georgia game. He didn't quite look the same. I'm pretty sure he got knocked out. They claim he was okay to go back in. I don't know. I'm not medical staff. I'm not going to question it, but y'all, that boy went night-night for about two seconds, if nothing else. So I would, I would like to see my rebels get healthy before we obviously challenge Missouri, but I think it'd be a really cool matchup to see, you know, I think they'll never do it right. Like they'll never put two teams from the same conference in a new year's uh, in a new year's six bowl. But I think it would be so cool to see, because I honestly think that the two of us could go up against a lot of other schools and actually do really well. So I think it'd be awesome to see that. But like I said, this is just wishful thinking. And I know it won't happen. But Missouri goes in, beats the hell out of Arkansas. That's just all I can say about that. Uh, One of the things I will say, too, about the Ole Miss-Mississippi State game is that we didn't actually have, like, a bench-clearing fight. Like, I'm really proud of us, guys. I'm really, really proud of us. Now, was there some jawing? Were there a few, like, maybe questionable late hits? I don't know. Like... Maybe Walton going flying through the air off of state sideline. Yeah, absolutely. But but one of the best uh, sideline clearing brawls I saw was during the Arkansas-Missouri game. Probably the most entertaining thing I saw in college football on Friday. So let's skip ahead because we're done with Friday. Saturday. 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 I mean, I'm sorry. That's horrible singing. I'm sorry. I just tortured all of you with that. But... Holy amaze balls. What a day for college football. I think you started off with Ohio State at Michigan. And I will I will take my crow and uh put a little ketchup and mustard on it because that's the only way I'm gonna be able to choke it down. Ohio State did not beat Michigan. Michigan was absolutely ready to play. To me, Ohio State looked a little flat. I don't understand that. Both teams made a lot of mistakes, but I think Michigan obviously overcame them a little bit better. Now, the questionable touchdown, I have no idea. I, From different angles, I think I can make an argument for it was a touchdown, it wasn't a touchdown. I'm not sure. I'm so glad I was not the ref during that game because, I mean, that's huge, right? Like, that's a turning point. If you say it's not a touchdown, what happens? Does Ohio State go on to win? I don't know. But the fact that Ohio State was driving at the end and Michigan intercepted it to end the game with just seconds left, like, what a great, great ending. Obviously, now Harbaugh's suspension is over, so we'll get to see him come back. He's going to coach them in a playoff game. He's, I believe, going to get to coach them in the 
um, Big Ten tam- championship game this weekend against Iowa, where they're already opened up as like 21 and a half point favorites. I have so many thoughts on that. Like, what a horrible, what a horrible conference championship game. That's not even going to be a game, guys. Like, that's going to be a beatdown. And I'm really sorry, Iowa, but that's going to be a beatdown. So, anyway, we'll get to see Harbaugh back. Obviously, Michigan felt like they had something to prove. They proved it. And so, yeah, interested to see what happens now, um, how bad Michigan ends up beating Iowa this weekend. But great, great way to kick off the whole Saturday shenanigans. Um, You also end up with, you know, Oklahoma and uh, TCU. Oklahoma beats the crap out of TCU 69-45. Obviously, one of the things that I think we see here is Jeff Lebby. It was rumored that he was going to state before this game. I don't, again, I don't know how many people follow, you know, Egg Bowl Twitter, as I call it. But, you know, it had kind of been going around. So I'd seen a little bit of it. And I was like, well, that's an interesting thought. And then they go out and they hang 69 on TCU. And I was like, well, Lebby was doing one of two things. One, he was making a statement of no, I'm staying. Or he was making a statement of like, hey, this is going to be my last game as your offensive coordinator. So like, let's go hang 69 points. So I think that's that's probably it. Um, I am interested to see how far up. Oklahoma moves in the rankings um, because now we do need to talk about rankings and the rankings that are actually going to to determine where Ole Miss and Oklahoma both end up in a bowl game is the fact that Kentucky beat Louisville. So thank you, Kentucky, for that. But considering Oklahoma was 13, we were 12, they hung 69, we hung 17. I don't know. I don't know how the committee is going to look at this. Personally, I feel like if you have them ranked behind us, you need to keep them behind us. I feel like, again, our losses, losing at Bama, losing at Georgia, second hardest strength of schedule in the country. Like, I just feel like there's there's a lot to be said for my Rebels. And I promise, okay, no, I don't promise this anymore. This is turning into, I am I am advocating for my Rebels to make a New Year's Six. But yeah, I am kind of interested to see the rankings after this week. Um I think they'll come back out on Tuesday. I think they do give us another one before the the conference championship games, and then we'll get the final one um, a week from this coming Tuesday, and that will be where everybody basically goes. So let the conference championship games play out, that kind of stuff. But, yeah, thanks, thanks Kentucky, for uh, helping your fellow SEC brethren out on that one. Let's just hope that it actually does help because knocking Louisville back will absolutely help. And speaking of Louisville, I'm going to jump ahead in the night a little bit, and let's talk about Florida State, Florida. So Louisville is now going to go play Florida State in the ACC championship game. And this is going to be a great game, I think, because Louisville is obviously going to be going into the game licking their wounds. But let me tell you, Florida State did not fall off as much as I thought they were going to with the backup quarterback. However, why both Florida players were not ejected for targeting is beyond me. They both lowered their head as the Florida State quarterback slid, and they both hit him leading with a crown of their helmet. They both should have been ejected. Now, the one was, obviously, makes sense. But still, they could have really messed that dude up, y'all. And then, shockingly, kind of like Jackson Dart, he was back out on the field two plays later. Again, I'm not a medical expert, but I don't think that dude knew where he was about two minutes before he went back out on the field. So, anyway, very proud of Florida State to come back. Um, Florida, you know, had him down early. And so, that was really good for Florida State. I feel like I feel like if... If they are going to make it to the top four, which there is absolutely still a possibility, they needed to go into the swamp and and win. And you guys, like, I'm not much of a, oh, well, they beat somebody by 50 or they beat somebody by 0.5. Like, it doesn't matter. A win is a win. And I think this is going to make my next point. Championship teams find a way to win, whether it's by one point, whether it's by 30 points. It really, it really doesn't matter. Just win, baby, win. Just win, baby, win. Thank you, Al Davis, for that. So let's talk about the game that we all want to talk about. Oh, the Iron Bowl. The Iron Bowl, you guys. So I will be completely honest. I watched the majority of it. The rest of it I watched via... ESPN Gamecast and then listen to Eli Gold on the radio as we were driving back from my in-laws from Thanksgiving and seeing some friends who had flown in from California. But we were both, even Cody, who is so not like a football fan, was like, I don't know what's happening. What's going on? So Auburn 
Auburn did the most Hugh Freeze thing I think I've seen in a very long time. They lose to New Mexico State, and then they come in and play Bama like it's the Super Bowl. Hey, any Ole Miss fans out there feel like deja vu all over again watching that? Yeah, me too. So, you know, as the game goes on, Bama just keeps battling back. And I just couldn't quite figure out. I was like, all right, this is Milrow obviously growing up, right? Like, this is obviously Milrow and the entire, the entire Alabama team being like, look, we have fought through too much crap this year. We're not going away. We're not going away for whatever reason. We're not going away. And guys, championship teams just do not go away. They don't. They find that way. And so we're listening to it on the radio and we hear everything that happens. And then we hear Eli Gold call that the snap goes over his head. And you're like, what? Like, what? Did he just say it's fourth and 31? No, no way. Fourth and 31. So fourth and goal on the 31. That's the official call. Fourth and goal on the 31. Holy crap, guys, this is it. And I'm dying a little bit inside because I know for Ole Miss, we really need Bama to win. We don't need Bama to lose at Auburn. Like, we just don't need this. This does not happen. Like, it doesn't happen in any kind of world that is 2023 and the way the season has gone, but it doesn't happen in a world where Ole Miss then could get into a New York, uh, into a New York, blah, 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 into a New Year's Six Bowl. Sorry, I'm really excited. I'm trying to make sure I get it all out and also not fully lose my voice. So we got to have Bama win. So we listen. And I'm hearing Eli Gold go through his call. Jalen steps back. He does his check downs. He's still in the pocket. And I'm thinking to myself, surely Auburn, like, surely Auburn rushed more than three or four, right? Surely they did. Then we hear Jalen throws it, and we wait, and we wait, and we wait, and then it's caught. And y'all, Cody and I said things that I just will not repeat because it was not a very PG series of words. I was like, what the hell just happened? And so we're on our way to meet some friends. We pull up at the bar at this point, like Alabama's won. What the crap? We go into the bar and I'm just like, we were supposed to be there by, by this point to meet this group. And we get in there and I'm like, oh my God, what just happened? And they're all Bama fans. So, you know, I'm just like, what the hell just happened? What just happened? I was like, they're like, what did you see it? We're like, no, we heard it. Like what happened? And so I watched the replay and I'm like, oh my gosh, y'all, my heart just like sank because when I watched that Auburn only sent to all I could think was fourth and 25 against Arkansas from 2015. And I was just like, what in the Hugh Freeze happened? And it did. And Bama won. And I feel like all is right in the world now. And I'm going to caveat that a little bit. So first of all, Twitter is undefeated. I don't, I don't like Elon Musk. Well, that's, that's just a topic that you can hit me up offline and we'll talk through it. But people on Twitter were just going in. Ask Hugh Freeze what's worse, 4th and 25 or 4th and 31? Oof. I'm first of all, I'm so happy the ghost of fourth and 25 has finally been exercised for Ole Miss because now fourth and 31 is way worse. Second of all, can we finally stop talking about the kick six? You guys, that literally happened 10 years ago. We now have fourth and 31. Auburn fans, don't get pissy. Do not get pissy when Bama fans live off of this for 10 years. You've lived off of pick six. You've had your decade. Let them have theirs. Please be done with pick six now. Thank you. Um, or I'm sorry, not pick six, kick six, kick six. You know, I'm telling you, I really don't feel great. I'm really hoping this isn't strep throat, but I'm here to do this because this is just too good to not, to not talk about and to let go for a few more days. So yes, kick six, you've had it for a decade. Let it go. Bama, you have fourth and 31. Enjoy it for the next 10 years. Um, also though, Jalen, Jalen, I get it. You were fired up, but boy, you're not getting the Heisman. I'm sorry. You're, you're not getting the Heisman, but, but good job. 
good job for advocating for yourself there at the last second. Yeah, I just, what in the Hugh Freeze happened? I, I have no idea. It was insane. And then, you know, like I said, we kind of fast forwarded a little bit. And then we, you know, we watched Florida, Florida State. And then Georgia, Georgia Tech. I'll be honest, though, I feel like Georgia was absolutely looking ahead to Bama. I don't, I don't think like they, I don't think they were ready for Georgia Tech to come out and hit them in the in the mouth the way they did. Now, again, why any team doesn't come out ready for their rival to just like, no matter what happened, like hit them as hard as they can, I still don't know. But Georgia obviously wasn't ready for it. And we ended up with the score we ended up with, which I think ended up being what, like 34 to 21 or something like that. It was, it was way closer than it should have been, but it really still wasn't that close. Like, I feel like you saw a lot of lackluster. I feel like you saw a lot of um, teams kind of maybe looking ahead towards conference championship games, but it was still insane because it just goes to show you cannot look ahead towards anything. In college football, you better be ready any given Saturday. And I mean, even Washington, Washington State, right? Like at the beginning of the season, we thought, oh man, that's going to be such a good game. And then Washington State kind of fell apart a little bit. But then it ended up being a great game. And, you know, they were talking about how they sent Penix Jr. out on the line, uh, fourth and one on their own 29, and they gave him a couple of plays. And, of course, you put it in the hands of your kid who is probably deservedly going to end up at the Heisman Trophy ceremony, and you let him make that decision. And he did, and he made the right decision. You end up winning it. So, you know, good call by the Washington coaches there. But – yeah, rivalry week was uh it was pretty insane. So I loved it. Um jumping ahead a little bit too as to kind of what we're gonna see and some of the things that I know we're gonna talk about, and the only reason why I know we're going to talk about them is because they're still on my outline. I really wanted to do a normal episode today, but this just deserved its own little one off kind of thing and two just not feeling great. I just don't really want to talk for a full 45 minutes. So the coaching carousel though, right? Elko from Duke going to A&M. This was after a little bit of controversy last night, thinking that Stoops was going to leave Kentucky and go to A&M. I think Elko is a good call for them. I think he will absolutely do great things there, especially given those resources. So I'm personally glad we're not going to play uh, A&M every single year moving forward. Um, that was, you know, that was hire number one and then hire number two, uh, Jeff Levy going to Mississippi state. That one's definitely interesting, especially with his background, with his father-in-law being Art Bryles. That's definitely a topic we're going to get into at some point because kind of along the lines of the Hugh Freeze hire at Auburn last year, there are some fans who were very, very adamant that Jeff Levy did not need to be state's head coach just because of his ties to his father-in-law and his ties to Baylor when he was there and everything that happened there. But Hey, He's your new head coach, State. So if nothing else, you know you're going to get an offense that can score some points. I am interested to see what he does defensively from that standpoint. And then also something that was said on Twitter today that I commented on from my own personal page was that not every assistant coach deserves a chance to become a head coach And they said that they felt like that was probably an unpopular opinion, but I actually agree with it. Not every assistant coach or coordinator is going to make a good head coach and not every head coach makes a good coordinator. And the example I gave, and it's probably because this is what I do in my everyday life, but project manager versus program manager, you know, projects, those individualized things, the things where you can really get down in the deep nitty gritty details, Program managers, you know, you oversee an entire program that's full of individual projects, but they all work together and you've got to step back and see the bigger picture. That to me is what a coordinator and a head coach are. And a lot of times those skills don't necessarily translate very well between the two. So I am interested to see what Lebby does. I hope Golding knows how to uh, take care of his offenses. I'm I'm pretty sure he does. Uh, he did okay when he was at Bama and Lebby was at Ole Miss. But yeah, I I expect us to see the uh, the picture of Lebby a few years ago with his We Run the Sip socks, his Ole Miss We Run the Sip socks coming back and uh, making an appearance a few times. I think Lane's already tweeted them out, but it's going to be a fun one. I hope it, it stays not 
as toxic as it was. I love the Egg Bowl being just good old, I hate you, I hate you. And then cool, let's just go off and watch everybody else. So yeah, on that note, I'm going to sign off. I am going to go drink my hot toddy and go to bed soon, hopefully. But I will be back on Friday on our regularly scheduled day. Don't worry, we're going to be getting into college basketball, both men and women's. I'm sure nothing's happened in the women's world, right? Definitely no stars not showing up. And then men's pretty quiet so far. Nothing nothing too crazy. So a lot left to play though. We're it's at the beginning of the season, so a lot of a lot of college basketball to be discussed. So we'll we'll hit on that. Also a lot of NFL coaching changes a lot of coordinators and position coaches being let go. So interested to see kind of how that shakes out. Also going to be talking about a few other things, um, some NBA things as we as we head through. I don't know that I'm going to talk about the Aaron Rodgers thing yet. I'm interested to see when the decision is made about if he's going to come back from IR or not. I have my own theories as to whether or not he faked the injury. I personally don't think he did, but I can see where people are questioning it. So don't know if we're going to go there, but obviously there's a lot to be talked about. But one of the things that I do want to end this episode with is something that I mentioned early on when we were doing our college football preview, and that's the Big 12 commissioner went and told a group of Texas Tech boosters Basically, go beat the hell out of Texas. Sarkeesian had the best response and said, well, I don't think he'll be eating his Thanksgiving dinner with us. And guys, Texas trolled the hell out of them. They played that clip on the Jumbotron at the end of the game. And it was it was kind of funny. Like, you have to admit, like, it's kind of funny. And, and he made the point, too, that obviously, you know, Oklahoma and Texas don't run the Big 12 because they haven't been to the championship game in a few years. But Texas is back. So... Yeah, so a lot of college football to talk about on Friday, but definitely wanted to end Rivalry Week on something that I did mention early on in the show and in an earlier episode and wanted to bring it back full circle. So as always, you can find us at thealabamatake.com. You can find us on Instagram at the Down underscore podcast. You can find us on Twitter at the Down Pod. Send us an email, thestaredownpod at gmail.com. On Facebook, the Down. Stare down's one word. And as always, sit back, relax, grab a drink or two, maybe a throat lozenge, and uh, enjoy this week. Hope you're decorated for Christmas. Hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving with your family. And uh, we'll catch you on the flip side of the stare down. Hotty toddy, y'all. Have a good week. Bye.